Hi, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to explain to you exactly why you should not be building SharePoint subsites or continuing to use a SharePoint intranet which contains subsites underneath it. So, the first thing I'm going to talk about is what are SharePoint subsites? So, SharePoint subsites are a classic feature of SharePoint Online, meaning it's not part of the modern structure of SharePoint. So, SharePoint Classic sites are being phased out of uh, SharePoint Online in favor of this new modern way of working with new modern sites, hub sites, uh, and all the kind of great features which goes along with it. Now, SharePoint subsites, as they are a classic feature, and they are something which are sites created underneath a existing site. Now, you'd typically see this um, where you might have, say, an intranet homepage, and then you'd have department sites which sit underneath them. So you'd have, say, the intranet as your core kind of site, and then a subsite for HR, finance, marketing, IT, and they'd individually have sites. Quite often, when I'm looking at these kind of classic structures, they would even have subsites underneath them. So let's say it might be intranet uh, forward slash um, um, marketing and then forward slash a name of a project for example so these are the kind of structures you tend to see you can clearly identify a sharepoint subsite by the url so take a look at this for example we've got here um the sort of root url of my sharepoint site you've then got sites and then forward slash now anything sites forward slash after that is going to be the core site so in this case it would be intranet then underneath this, we've got a subsite which is human resources. You can have more subsites underneath that. So it might be for a particular project, maybe that sits underneath that's so a project X. And then you would um, see in the URL, if you went to say documents, it would say share documents, uh, then the name of a folder, then the name of any documents. And that's typically how the URL is built out. But within reason, you can have as many of these subsite layers underneath um, a existing SharePoint site. Um, but that's something that we want to get away from. In reality, we should always just have, in the modern world of SharePoint, it would just be um, the single site. And we'll talk a little bit about how this is constructed later. But <coughs> you would see intranet, and then it would be shared documents. Or it would be sites, forward slash, human resources, and that would be your one site. Then we talk about using hub sites later on to link these things together. So... Another question would be, when should I create subsites in SharePoint? And the answer is never. Never create them um, going forward. You should always be using the modern SharePoint functionality, which is to create communication or modern team sites and then link them up or associate them to a hub site, which we're going to come on to talking about. But some of the reasons why people used to create subsites was it provided a lot of the features that now hub sites would provide. So it would provide a consistent navigation, meaning that you could create the navigation at your top site and then the subsites would inherit that navigation. It would also inherit permissions. And this was probably the most commonly used reason why you'd have subsites, because you can define your permission structure at the very top and that would then sort of trickle down to all the other areas. So taking an example again from this URL bar, if, say, for example, we had in front of this uh, intranet was our top site, human resources was our second site, uh, subsite, project X was a subsite underneath that, and then we had the documents library, then we had folders, then we had uh, our document name, say doc, .docx, the permissions would be set at the intranet layer. Um, say, for example, all users have read access to the site, and then it would go down and all that permissions would be inherited to the sub layers. But let's say, for example, we could then change the permissions at this layer to say, okay, well, actually, um, everyone's got read access, but also the security group for the human resources team have edit access from this point onwards. Um, and then we might break it down further. So under this project, okay, well, actually, only two people from human resources have edit access to this particular project, um, and everyone else has read access. So each of these different layers, you could define different permission structures, um, and then underneath that, all the sub layers would then inherit that permission structure. So it's all well and good talking about don't use SharePoint subsites, but what can I use instead of SharePoint subsites? So instead of using SharePoint subsites, what we can use is the new modern feature from SharePoint Online, which is known as SharePoint hub sites. 
and this is the direct replacement of SharePoint subsites. So any of the functionality that you're looking to get from using SharePoint subsites, we should be using a SharePoint hub site to replace. So what is a SharePoint hub site? So Microsoft define a SharePoint hub site um, as a SharePoint hub site helps you meet the needs of your organization by connecting and organizing sites based on project, department, division, region, uh, and anything else that you can kind of think of as a category. It makes it easy to discover related content such as news and other site activities such as documents being created um, and apply common navigation, branding, and site structure and permissions throughout all of the um, sites which are associated to the hub site. Now the beauty of a SharePoint hub site is actually that you can have you can actually have multiple SharePoint hub sites. Typically most organizations would have one hub site as that internet homepage but you might have hub sites for um, let's say for example if you're an international company um, and you say for example got um, uh, a base in U the US, uh, Europe and Asia, you might have three separate hub sites because there might be different content, different news, different people accessing them, um, even different languages and things like that. So you might have different hub sites um, for different things. You can also choose to roll up and associate hub sites into each other now as well. Um, so you can actually have a master hub site which US, Europe and Asia feeds into. So what does a SharePoint hub site look like? So this is a typical SharePoint hub site. Um, now you can see across the top, we've got this consistent navigation bar, which will flow between all the different sites that I have access to. So if I was to move to my finance site, you'll see that the navigation bar remains exactly the same. So the URL has changed. It's not sites forward slash the hub forward slash finance it's just sites forward slash finance as it's its own independent site and the great thing that is its own independent site let's say for example going back to that scenario where we've got multiple hub sites if this was something that we wanted to change its association um, to a hub site we can always go into site information and we can change which hub site from this drop down bar um, actually it's associated to so we could always switch it around one of the limitations of sharepoint sub sites is that they were static once you created a sub site it was very much in a linear structure that cannot be moved out you cannot get it out of that structure and associate it to a totally different site with the hub site association feature you can do you can change that around at any time we can go back to our hub site by clicking on the link across the top um, and you can see that the, the colors that i've used i've used this midnight green color and it's actually um, set at the hub site layer as a color theme and then all of the other sites which are associated to that hub site are then using that color so I've not set this color at the finance layer it's actually set at the hub site layer so even if I went into uh, into here and I was to click on uh, to change the look and then theme you would see it actually tells me your site is connected to the hub site and is set and uh, this theme is set automatically um, from the top layer so I can't even change it at the the this kind of secondary layer um, uh, of site so that's the navigation we've also got um, the the theme as I say the, the colors applied through those other sites as well We've also got the ability to set permissions. So if I go into the cog on my internet homepage and then I click on site permissions, you'll also see there's a hub area here. So we can sync hub permissions to associated sites. So this is the other feature I was talking about earlier about why people used to use SharePoint subsites is that you can have this permission structure which is set at the top layer and then using hub sites that, are so, uh, that, that have sites associated to it, they can then sync those permissions up as well. Um, we've also got the ability to roll up content. So something that subsites didn't do that well, and now it's much slicker, much easier, is the ability to roll up news articles uh, and documents and other things going on. So here we've got this news article roll up where we can see news articles which are coming from, say, human resources, finance, and these news articles are directly created on those uh, sites which are associated to the hub site and then I can pull out as a news feed any news articles which are associated to this hub site so that pulls them up automatically um, you can do things very similar as well with documents uh, and events and things like that as well
So there's some of the core kind of things uh, that you want to be looking out for. As I say, uh, we've got the, the shared navigation, we've got the color themes, we've got the permissions, and we've got the news uh, roll-ups, just to name a few core features of why you should be using SharePoint hub sites instead of SharePoint subsites. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe to my channel for future uh, top tips around SharePoint and Microsoft 365. If you've got any questions at all, um, or if you've got any thoughts about using SharePoint hub sites or uh, the decommissioning of SharePoint subsites, please use the comment feed below. Thank you very much.